The following podcast contains naughty language and ridiculous situations. Listener discretion is advised. There has been a word that has been passing between my perfectly formed and full TSLs lately. A word that we all use in everyday situations, usually referring to the inane or ridiculous. And that word is why. Allow me to give you a few examples as to what I mean. One, why is Jason Blum bringing back the Blair Witch Project? Hasn't anyone heard of the phrase gone to the well once too often? Two, why is the scary movie franchise getting a reboot? They weren't funny then, then they're not going to be funny now. And three, why is the Har Inc., why is Har Inc. being such dicks as to send a cease and desist letter to the makers of the Friday the 13th, the game resurrected fan mod? a platform I spoke on, on about on this very show during this very intro last week. Well, we can all ask why to all sorts of things, but I have one final why to, for you. Why do you listen to us? Have you no lives or hobbies? Of course you do, and we are more than grateful that you can shoehorn us into your busy lives. And welcome to Trick or Treat Radio. Welcome to episode 611 of Trick or Treat Radio. Trick or Treat Radio is the world's most dangerous podcast and is recorded in front of an undead studio audience here at Castle Wolfenstein. Also, the lair of lost swag within the Raven Chateau and Casa de Negative Zero. We are broadcasting live across the fucking globe. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Got it. And, uh... Let's dive right in and uh, let you know what we're doing tonight, since I think last week we, I don't think we talked about it until about 45 minutes in or something, so <laughs> before we get derailed, tonight we'll be talking about the film The Invisible Fight, a heavy metal kung fu film from Estonia. That, that's a first for us. I don't think we've ever done a heavy metal kung fu movie, let alone a film from Estonia, so uh, it's always a... Uh, Always a first, right? Yeah, I knew that was a real place. I thought that was where um, where um, uh, Inseal Man was sent. <laughs> place. So you thought it was just made up for that? Yeah, that was like like you know, Latveria or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, Latveria is a little confusing because there is a Latvia, right? Oh, there is. Yeah. So. But yeah, so our first Estonian film, I believe. I can't remember any other. Oh, it's got to be. Yeah. I mean, I think we would have remembered it if we did. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> By the way, MZ, what's not? this isn't a critique, so don't take it this way, but you, I've noticed you've been reading your intros lately. Have you you've been trying to compose a little something? Yes. All right. Yes. The only reason why I sound like I'm reading is because I am. <laughs> I decided to, All right. I, hey, I'm not going to hide it. I've uh, I've decided to, uh, instead of winging it, I've decided to uh, form it, you know, yeah. uh, and uh, have it all laid out for me and then just read it off. Nothing wrong with that. Appreciate the effort. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. A little bit, a little bit of effort goes a long way. Hmm. That's. That's like so the antithesis said. of this show. <laughs> <laughs> Any effort put into this show is uh, so not like the show. <laughs> so, all right. So we're going to be talking about the invisible fight. Looking forward to this discussion. I have no idea where it's going to go. Um, could be, could be interesting. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. And, uh, just right off the top, we might actually try to truncate this episode. Do you remember what that means, Raven Shadow? Uh, make smaller. Yes. Okay. We may try to truncate this episode because uh, 
Raven Shadow is recovering from uh, from uh, an event. Uh, I'll let you t- talk about it if you want. And um, yeah. also, I, I have a, a work deadline, and I, I have still I have still more work to do. And uh, it is <laughs> eight thirty five p.m. and I won't finish this until well. Normally, I don't finish doing the podcast till like one a.m. So I'd rather not start start up uh, my work at one a.m. So if this episode is a little shorter, then you know why. But um, on the other hand, who fucking knows? Probably be lo- longest episode ever. Now that I've said that. Right. Whenever we try to go, you know, we try to truncate, we always end up uh, elongate, you know, uh, <laughs> so usually the opposite. But uh, no, uh, after much talked about, I did have my first uh, cataract surgery uh, this past Tuesday, uh, April 9th. Um, so I did my first. Wait, eye. did you say Tuesday? Yeah. Was it, did it happen at like 3 p.m.? <laughs> <laughs> 3 30 p.m. Yeah, or imagine something. Imagine having cataracts and you're looking up at the goddamn eclipse. <laughs> well, that was Monday, and, and someone gave me glasses to like, you want to look up? I'm like, I ain't gonna fuck shit up. No, I ain't taking any other necess- unnecessary risks. Um, but yeah, so I had my surgery. Seemed to go well, uh, Doctor Blake. Oh, you're right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I thought I thought the eclipse. I thought it was on Tuesday, but you're right. It was that would have been fucking hilarious if it was like the same time and. Like you, right. after your surgery, you looked up and fucking got some kind of weird superpowers or something. <laughs> oh, dope! I got like X-rated vision. X-rated you know? vision. And, and I think I think yeah, you have that his, already. His eyes would be like the size of peas. I mean, <laughs> they're small enough as it is, you know. That's nice. Uh, I will have you know when I was in recovery um, of the procedure. Um, uh, one of the, just to clarify, yeah, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's probably safe. <laughs> one of the, uh, nurses did, uh, say I look like, uh, Keanu Reeves, uh, nice. and Dr. Oh. Bling, uh, reiterated that word. So I was like, Whoa, thank you. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah, no, I had the one eye done, which is weird. They, uh, they, they like put like a, it was really weird. Cause I was laying down, um, and they strap you in and they like cover you a little bit. So it was kind of weird, and it felt like I was in like a kaleidoscope of, I don't know, you could see weird things, you could feel pressures, and my eye felt like, like I was seeing these like, like uh, not jelly bears, gummy bears that were being poked, but it was really my eyelid. It was weird. Um, That's yeah, it had to be there. It was weird. They give you a topical, they give you a twilight anesthesia. Uh, okay. So, so you're yeah. still oh, awake. You sparkled. You just like, yes, you're sparkly. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I very much Amber Crombie and Finch type. Uh, Amber Crombie and Finch. Yeah, Amber Aber- 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 Crombie and Finch. There's no F. Yeah. Aber- Crombie. Isn't it yeah, Aber- the sweetest? It, isn't it Fitch, or is it Finch? Yeah, the sweetest supergroup Abba. Abba. Fitch. Aber- Fitch. It's Aber- Crombie and Finch. Yeah. He it's said. A, he a, said Amber Crombie Amber and, Finch. and Finch. Oh. Amber Crombie and Finch. Yeah. <laughs> Alice the Crowley and Finch. So, so after all this was done, for, so for like a half an hour, did you look like Sloth from the Goonies? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> no, not yet. But I did have to wear. Like I was telling Johnny, I still had a big like a uh, like a like a bulbous blue beetle uh, like like a uh, like eye patch you're gonna wear when I sleep. But uh, but here's the thing, though. So I've been healing ah. good. So I, yeah, it's a Dr. Bling yesterday. I'm healing good. But here's the thing. I also haven't had a cigarette since uh, since Sunday, uh, since Monday, April 8th. And I haven't had a, had a drink since uh, Sunday, April 7th. Wow. Yeah. Clean and sober, Raven Shadow. Dude, look at you. Yeah. Dude, where are your and chips? It- and, and it sucks. <laughs> you have that kind chips? of time on your hands. <laughs> yeah, what have you? What the fuck have you been you doing? Get a coin or something, or some sort of chip or something, or uh, taking you, sobriety for so long. What have you been filling your time with, Raven Shadow? Here's what sucks too. I ask the question. I'm like, all right, so what about intimacy? When can I do that? Um, and they said you got to wait at least, you know, at least a couple weeks. So, oh man, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Oh, hold yeah. on. Freeze, yeah. freeze frame. Freeze frame. Intimacy? Yeah. You had work on your eyes, not your balls. What's going on here? <laughs> okay. Well, that was 
the nicest way I could phrase it, right? You know. Yeah, but he I mean, can't, what, he I can't mean, knock Dust boots happens? like Frankenstein, okay? But what? Right. But what is going on? Raymond Shadow, what goes on with you when you're having sex? He what had, happens to your eyes when you're having sex? Dude, he had surgery. Dude, no. Could pop yeah, something. I know he had surgery, but what does that have to do with anything? You can't, but any you can't act overexert. that might cause yeah. like pressure or straining or to make your you know, <laughs> face red. So, <laughs> Really? You, 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 you put that much yeah. effort into it so much that your eyeballs are going to explode? Oh, no, you know, kind of like Superman. You know, I need to have like I need to be exposed to. Uh, well, MZ, not everyone Luke. just just lays there and does nothing. Okay. <laughs> hey, you shut up. <laughs> but it's like any kind of intimacy. So I've all I have more time than Morris Day. I'm not drinking. I'm not smoking. And I can't do whatever the fuck. So I just been fucking sleeping a lot. Wow. <laughs> Almost sounds like it's not even worth it. <laughs> yeah, like I was better blind. I go for round two in two weeks. It sucks. <laughs> I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> Drinking fucking Poland Springs. Great. <laughs> I feel like what it means to be from Maine, I guess. Fucking. Oh my God. <laughs> Why is he so fucking amused by this? It's a good thing he didn't have eye surgery. He's fucking popping an eyeball right now. Yeah. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. There's no reason to be this fucking <laughs> entertained by this. My, my doctor says I can't have sex. My eyes will explode. <laughs> my eyes will explode out of my head if I have sex. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of cartoons, I guess, you know, it's great. We have uh, Robert Higgins hanging out in the chat room. I... <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be careful about laughing too. <laughs> he can't lift above and, uh, 10 pounds. He can't laugh. He can't yeah. get in. He can't get intimate. Yeah. Any kind. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I bet you can do this. MZ, you're gonna you're gonna like this. Can you do a Kenneth Keith Callen back? <laughs> I, no, I can't. I can't do any of that. I can't. You can't even, blow smoke yeah. out of your eyes. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> MZ, you remember that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Smoke out of his eyes. Yeah. He tried blowing smoke out of his eyes. He ended up throwing up all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's funny is I just I just showed that to you, uh, Tanya the other day. I don't know why it came up, but something like uh, something about that oh. came up and it made me think of that. And I watched the first time he showed up on Howard's show. Oh, <laughs> he tried to blow smoke out of his eye. <laughs> he's like turkey sandwich. He's like crying and vomiting and get his keys going back. Whatever happened to that guy? I don't know. Oh. I think he passed away. Oh, shit, I hope not. He must have had sex after after cataract surgery. <laughs> oh, he did die. Yeah. Oh, damn. In 2008? What the fuck? Yeah. Oh, not Kenneth Keith. Yeah, he died at 39 years old. Jesus. 39? That was it? He was, It says he died April 24th, um, 2008, after falling ill in jail. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. He suffered from chronic cystic fibrosis, contracted pneumonia while in custody on a charge of attempted child abduction. Oh, well, maybe oh, he should, maybe he oh, should be whoa. dead. <laughs> okay, well. Ooh, so, Robert Higgins, what do you got? Um, <laughs> I see Kenneth Keith. And uh, he looks scared. So, speaking <laughs> of... I'm scared, too, because there's cops all deep in this. <laughs> Uh, let me oh, let me let me finish reading. That... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just saying. Oh Lord, this is quite the tension. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I don't. Um, so I don't. I don't. Do you guys get the Robert Higgins uh, reference? I don't. Why don't oh, yeah. you do it, Shadow? Why don't you do it? Yeah, it's a legendary call when uh, when OJ. Um... 
when uh, AC Collins got to OJ's house and they were covering the Bronco, uh, there was a call that came in and they're like, right now we have Robert Higgins. And he's like, Robert Higgins. He's like, right now oh. I'm looking at the van and I see okay. OJ, man. And he looks scared because there'd be cops too. Dead too. So I'd, be, I'd be scared too because this cop's uh, all deep in this. He's got to play it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah fi- you'll find it on YouTube. Just put in like OJ phony phone call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, right. and you, it'll come up. Is it? Okay, oh. here it is. It's really right. everywhere now. All right. Be quiet for a moment. We have on the phone with us as well Robert Higgins, who <laughs> lives in the neighborhood and is on the ground and can see inside the van. Mr. Higgins. Uh, yes, uh, how are you? Uh, just about as tense as you are, sir. Oh, my lord, this is quite the tensest. <laughs> what can you see? Oh, what I'm looking at right now is I'm looking at the van and I see OJ kind of slouching down, looking very, very upset. Now, look at here, he looks very upset. <laughs> I don't know what he's going to be doing. Can you, can, you, can you see him doing anything specific? Is he merely sitting there? He is just uh, sitting around, you know, just uh, looking like he'd be very nervous. Can you hear anything, Mr. Higgins? It's just too much commotion. I'd be in the back of a news van, so I can't really hear that good, but I can see it all. <laughs> and I see OJ. I see OJ, man, and he looks scared. And I would be scared because there's cops all deep in this. Thank you, Mr. Higgins. And baba booey to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, keep it going, keep it okay. going, keep it the going. The driveway of O.J. Simpson's home in Brentwood. Clearly an effort being made to have him come out of the vehicle. <laughs> in the doorway of the house, his friend, Al Cowling. Peter, by the way, just uh, for the record, this is Al Michaels. Uh, that was a totally farcical call. <laughs> uh, lest anybody think that that was somebody who was truly across the street. That was not. Uh, he, he said something in code at the end that's indicative of uh, the mentioning of the name of uh, a certain radio talk show host. Okay, thanks, Al. So he was not there. <laughs> All right, we have them on every coast. Thank you very much. Not the first time nor the last time will have been had. <laughs> I remember the call, but I didn't remember the name. So that's, uh, oh. yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Baba Booey. Oh, <laughs> Baba Booey to y'all. Oh, is that uh, funny? Jesus Christ, that is funny. Uh, oh, classic. Oh. Classic. Oh. Just as funny now as it was then. Well, we, we do have Robert Higgins joining us <laughs> in the uh, chat room, <laughs> so and that's pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, he says, uh, hope you're feeling better, Raven Shadow. Thank you, sir. And he said, "Are we are we talking Billy Barty truncated?" <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. no, well, well, we might bring it from a Yao Ming to a Kevin Hart. Let's, let's <laughs> Yao Ming to a Kevin Hart. <laughs> um, he asked, "Did you wake up bent over the table with your gown wide open?" <laughs> uh, no, I was awake for that. <laughs> And they said the earthquake wasn't in New Jersey. It was Raven Shadows DTs. <laughs> oh, shit. He says, I can send you the Callum back episode tonight. I have all the Channel 9 shows. Oh, Ooh, shit. Nice. And uh, he said nice. he did. And he, he said it before I found it, but he said he did pass away in prison. He was put away for courting a youngster. God uh, damn it. So, yeah, he deserves to uh, <laughs> do yeah. everything he got, I guess. I mean, I mean, you could appreciate him being weird, but you can't appreciate him for being that weird. Yeah. So good now we know what Monster Zero's line is. That's good. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Well, that's um, I guess that's a segue <laughs> talking about Robert Higgins. Um, so OJ's dead. How about that? Uh, yeah. How do you guys feel about that? <laughs> good. It, it's and such they, a know, weird. It's a just, just never found the killer. <laughs> <laughs> Are they going to close the fucking case now? It's still open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it. They got to close it. I mean, even the jur- even the a couple of the jurors admit that the reason why they sided with OJ in this case was because of the Rodney King fiasco. Well, it wasn't a fiasco. It was, I mean, 
<laughs> no, no, it was a fiasco. It, it, no, what what the cops did to that guy was totally not right, and they got they got off on it. Right, yeah. both ways, literatively and uh, figuratively. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But that was crazy, though. I remember, you know, I remember watching that shit on TV. Well, both fucking things, but with the OJ thing and watching his turn, like, this is weird. Fucking, what's Nordberg doing? Um, and just the hoopla and and the commotion. Yeah, my my, fir- my first semester in in college, I think, was during our finals when the um, when the verdict came out. And, uh, and I think I too, I was even working at a, at a grocery store back in the days of all the, you know, the uh, inquirers and all the weekly world news and all that stuff that was huge back in '94, and it, it was everywhere. Yeah, that was nuts. I mean, yeah, because if you, I mean, if you're our age or even like a, you know, maybe the next generation, the younger generation from us, like that was a huge fucking thing, right? Like. What yeah. does anyone know? Do you guys know offhand what year it was? It must have been like ninety three or four, right? Ninety four. Ninety four. Ninety four. Okay. I remember June twelfth, nineteen June twelfth, nineteen ninety four. I remember it happened during the uh, NBA finals. I think it was or NBA playoffs. I was watching. Um. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, it was June twelfth, nineteen ninety four. That was when the Bronco chase happened. Okay. So, I mean, if if you were watching TV, old enough to, like, watch TV and, like, pay attention to stuff then, like, you, w- you would have, it, it dominated, right? Like, it was, like, the fucking story. And that's yeah. significantly before, like, a significant amount of time before the internet was, like, widespread. And, oh, sure. you know, obviously none of us had phones maybe raven shadow had a pager then but probably not right 94 yeah i didn't even, no no i didn't have a pager that yet either um yeah that was that was the first summer i graduated high school so i had my first job was at uh, the big d uh <laughs> you know bagging groceries big d. Yeah. The, big d. Wow. the big d and i yeah. get to hear howard um you know in the morning all the time you know so that was prime howard was doing all the oj stuff all the phony phone calls on yeah. the old stern show yep you know well maybe howard was on night back in those days maybe but um be the way yeah I, I would, he was he was night at that point but I, I would tape i would tape put a, a blank tape in um when we'd go out and i'd have it you know in the morning and stuff but yeah yeah the whole i remember I was sitting on the floor uh, looking at my baseball cards and I was just finishing up watching Evil Dead 2. Then I shut <laughs> off the VCR, I went back to cable, and there was this whole chase going on. I didn't know what was going on, but it was the helicopter shot of the Bronco going down the highway with all the cops right behind it. And I wasn't exactly sure what was going on. Then they said, oh, you know, they kept on bringing up OJ Simpson. I'm like, what's going on with him? Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was. And when I finally, when I finally start putting, the- <laughs> MZ has a cat <laughs> vying for his headphones. Get out of here! That's amazing. Hey. <laughs> I hope people are watching the live feed because it's fucking hilarious. This cat's trying to <laughs> get the headphone cord. <laughs> It's like a salacious crumb from Jedi. <laughs> He's just like cracking Jabba's head. <laughs> get, out, get out of here. Uh, and um, when I started to piece the whole thing together, I'm like, oh shit. And then when I found out it's a, when it's, you know, I found it was OJ, I was like, oh shit. When I f- heard that it was, you know, because of attempted murder or murder of his wife, it's like, oh shit. This is going to be big, you know? Yeah, and, but I didn't, had no idea. I had no idea it was going to be as big as it would you get away from me. Is that, it, that it turned out to be as big as it? Ow! <laughs> get out of here! That turned out to be as big as it did. Uh, pretty amazing stuff, mm. and uh, just I mean, just you feel for the family, though. I mean, Jesus Christ! And, I mean, I don't know if you guys ever. I I don't know. Did you guys ever see the unsolicited pictures? of of the of the uh of the crime 
I don't. I, I don't know. Actually, I don't so. think so. If you did, you'd never forget it. I saw it. I. It, oof, that's rough. Jesus Christ! What a mess. I mean, I know it. I mean, it led to obviously like it was right for sensationalism because not only do you have you know the football player, football legend, you know, mediocre actor, um, death, you know, of the ex-wife, the boyfriend. Then you have Cato Kalin, you know, the pool boy, you yeah. know, living in the house. Then you have Judge Ito growing his beard, which is a, like Tajiri <laughs> was a really big deal. <clears throat> you know, you get Arthur the, Clark the, and and uh, Robert Kardashian and uh, just yeah, Johnny. Then you got Johnny Cochran. Yeah, Johnny Cochran. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and you know, racist cops hitting the stand, and even. Uh, it, it, there is a horror connotation to this too. Mm -hmm. Tracy Savage, Tracy Savage, who was a reporter, uh, a, a news reporter or a news anchor uh, for a uh, television studio out in Los Angeles somewhere. Well, Tracy Savage was in Friday the Thirteenth Part Three. <laughs> We all of a sudden start playing six degrees. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So let Tracy me. Savage. She's she's the one who played the girlfriend of the guy who was able to stand on his hands and got sliced in half by Jason. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If... Yeah, yeah. So who did she kill? She didn't kill anybody. She was murdered. She was, she was killed. Oh, in in the house. No, no, no. He said she was a reporter. Wait, the, horror, the horror connection to this case is that Tracy Savage, who was a reporter on this case and actually took the stand in the mm -hmm. in the trial. Oh, she okay. She's was, having to... She was in Friday the 13th Part 3. And then became a reporter. Yeah. Yeah. She left acting, became a reporter. Left reporting is now back to acting, but in low-budget films. But But, yeah. So there's a little horror connection right there, as if you need any more horror in this story. <laughs> right, right. I know, right? Let me uh, let me read the chat real quick. A creepy girl is hanging out. She says hi, guys. Um, she has a question that I'll get back to in a, in in a few moments because um, it's not related, but there is some other related stuff. Uh, Robert Higgins says somebody check on Kato Kalin. <laughs> 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 and uh, Evil Corny said, I had just graduated from high school and was watching that car chase. Yeah, same. Yeah. Like, I I just graduated as well. Um, yeah. And Robert Higgins says, he was in Boston at nights. Was in Bo I don't know what that was. That was... Oh, uh, Harry Stern. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And then he said, you and I yeah. did the same thing, Raven Shadow, in all caps. Nice. <laughs> hey, I re I recorded it too, but I just recorded the news portion. <laughs> I, I I had like over two hundred tapes. Yeah, and what did you fucking do with them? I threw them away. Yep, yep. You could have asked maybe a friend that also was a big Stern fan if you wanted them. <laughs> maybe it would have been a nice gesture, like a gentleman. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know anybody of that. You know, that like we were friends. Right, right, <laughs> my, my eyes gonna blow up. Yeah, exactly. Don't yell. Uh, Ewell Corny also says. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. This is Robert Higgins. Now I'm getting confused. He said, uh, "Watched ABC Live with my grandparents and started dying laughing. They didn't know what I was laughing at <laughs> with the uh, fucking oh, Robert shit. Higgins shit." He actually saw it live. That's yeah. great. He said, "I still have some cassette recordings from back in the day of Stern on WBCN." <clears throat> WBCN. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the the interview that Stern does with Al Michaels following this. Yeah, that's great. Miracle. It is classic. <laughs> classic. So good. Uh, Corny says, I want to say that I had seen Speed earlier the day of the OJ chase. <laughs> 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 and Robert Higgins said, I did see those pictures. It was a massacre. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was brutal. Absolutely brutal. So, I mean, it's it's one of those things because, like, up until that, like, 
the impression that most people got from OJ was that he was a really likable guy, right? Like he was in like the Naked Gun movies. He was a very popular uh, athlete, football player, and I think he did adver- ads and stuff like that. Yeah, for for Hertz, <clears throat> you yeah. know, the jumping over. Uh, yeah. yeah, Nordberg. Um, although we do have a uh, friend's SBGB did have the song "Mary Nordberg." about mm-hmm. uh about oj's uh violent past and isn't there the the famous hollywood legend how he was in talks to play the terminator but james cameron said that no one would ever believe oj to be a killer or <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> I, I did hear that yeah that's, however that you know it's crazy goes. yep yep it's true <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's i i mean and he was pretty much like I mean, he definitely went, got out of the public eye for for a while, and did he ever really come back? Like, I don't even know. Like, I just don't remember hearing well, much Jay, about him. Yeah, he 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 never really did come back. He was trying to, uh, well, see, he got in trouble again. Yeah, yeah that's he was, right. He ended up stealing like uh, it was money uh, or something, right? Like, well, it was his. It was his. Uh, uh, memorabilia uh, collector oh, his, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. For his memorabilia like his heisman trophy and i guess a couple of awards or, or whatever you know a jersey or whatever and he ended up getting like five more years in jail for that or oh, whatever yeah, that's right i remember yeah, i do remember that now and he wrote the book had you know him. if i did it if he wrote he wrote the book if i did it you know if Jesus i had Christ. killed uh if i had killed nicole brown this is how i would have done it it's like Jesus Christ. Yeah, how can you even, like, just the (laughs) idea that you would do that, like, (laughs) it's, it's, it's it's weird, right? Oh, it's fucking sick. Yeah. And it's got balls. Like, Jesus, what balls. That's, like, like MZ size fucking balls. That's crazy. I would love to. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't want to spend too much time on, uh, on OJ, but, I mean, he's dead. (laughs) Yeah probably yep. <laughs> i mean that's it like i feel like there's no commentary he's dead yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but uh i mean is there anyone who doesn't think that he did it i mean seriously like i mean aside from a few jurors <laughs> it's i mean i don't know he's kind of just kind of a piece of shit like the who, guy who, had the world in his hands. Yeah. And he and he fucked it up in the most horrific way possible. Yeah. I mean, a lot of I don't want to get into the psychology of it too much necessarily, but like, you know, I imagine that someone like that, like uh, you know, is a, a well known athlete, he probably probably thought he couldn't do any wrong. Probably couldn't it was sort of like um I don't know if you guys know much about the Aaron Hernandez thing, the, you know, the former um, Patriots. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. He didn't. Yeah. He, yeah. He, like, I've seen documentaries about it. He didn't think he was going to get caught. Like, he didn't think there's any way. Because, you know, when he was going through college and high school, like, everyone just fucking, like, basically did let him do whatever he wanted, you know, and he got away with everything. Right. Um, even in school, like, they covered up shit that he did. And, if you know, if you got bad grades, they would, like, cover that up and, like, make sure he... he you, you know, like past classes and things like that. So it kind of breeds this, uh, you know, like feeling of, of, um, not, not entitlement. Yeah. Not, not needing accountability, you know? So, yeah. um, yeah. So I don't know if that's the same thing over, you know, with, with OJ, who the fuck knows and who the fuck cares, but you know, like a lot of times these athletes are coddled and, you know, because, they're fucking great at what they do. And, um, yeah, and everyone just wants to like, come play for me, come play for us. We'll do anything, you know, like, <laughs> or just bet S you get so pissed off. Your ex wife's with somebody else and you fucking snap. Yeah. You know? And, and I'm sure there is a reason for it. If, if that was, if that was actually true, I don't know. Like I assume was, yeah. was it proven that she was with Cato or, no, it wasn't Cato. It was uh, Rongold. Oh, Rongold. Rongold. That's right. I'm sorry. You're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah. Rongold. Yeah. 
somehow Cato just like chilled. He was That's like, right. he just, yeah, he was just yeah. hanging out. He was just a surfer dude. He was just yeah. a surfer yeah. dude living in, in, living in the guest house. That's right. Yeah. That's all he was. Who got movie deals afterwards. <laughs> I know, right? Like, he's, yeah. He's the one that benefited the most. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. It's, yeah, it's so weird. Well, actually, it was a card. Actually, because of this, we ended up getting Kardashian after Kardashian. Uh, and you're now probably we can't right. get rid of them. Like they're, they're like fucking cockroaches. You can't get rid of them. <laughs> Johnny Cockroach. <laughs> fucking weird time, man. What a weird fucking time. And Corny says he was abusive before the murder. There's never an excuse for beating a woman. Right. Yeah, I mean, I imagine he was a, a piece of shit to her. And so she probably was like, you know what? Like, they probably weren't even done. I don't even I don't remember the details, but they probably weren't even together. And he just found out about it and just couldn't fucking deal yeah. with it. So, yeah. But whatever. He's dead. See you, buddy. Yeah. See you. Yeah. See you, OJ. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So the other question that was asked, um, let's see. Where is it again? Um, Creepy Girl says, did you guys watch WrestleMania? Um, I watched like four matches over the two days, um, four and a half, maybe I just wasn't feeling it. I haven't, I haven't been watching WWE at all. And I just, I don't know, just, just not really feeling it. The first match I watched was not very good. Um, it was a little bit sloppy. And then the second one, was it the second one? It was just a, just a fucking clusterfuck. So yeah, I just, I didn't really get past the second match on night one and then night two i think i just watched like one match and then i watched the end of the cody roman um match i just basically rewound to the fucking finish and watched it from there <laughs> yeah yeah but did you either you guys either you guys care no i mean i didn't like i say when 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 tom Smythe, you know was over we'd watch it um but now that he's in Vegas, I did, you know, I did read about the, the, the results, you know, it was, it's a pretty stacked card. I mean, like, I don't know how folks watched. It's a, it's a lot of commitment. Yeah. To so do like, both nights. It's like eight hours just for the two shows. And then if you want to do like, you know, all the, the pre-show stuff, it's like another two hours a day. So potentially 12 hours worth in two days. But from what I heard, people liked, liked the card. Yeah. I mean, they were happy with the, with the ending you know yeah cody finished the story yeah i i mean i wasn't invested so let me just say that i wasn't invested in in the story because i just haven't been watching the ruby but um uh, i could not believe the fucking booking in that match it was so over bloated like there is like people who shouldn't have been involved like just because they're fucking legends like the Undertake undertaker came out um, looking really rough and uh, chokeslam the yeah. rock who had come out and then Cena was there and somehow some reason Seth Rollins and his shield um, get up and music came out um, I don't know just it just was it was really over bloated I just if you're gonna have Cody win let him fucking win you know like, right right so it means something like I feel like with all the with all the um, run-ins and fucking cameos, it just dilutes the impact of him winning. But I don't know. That's just me. Now, uh, where was it? Where was the um, the show? Uh, Philly. 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 I guess uh, on on the Kevin Nash uh, podcast, he's like, he said, yeah. I guess during a lot of the sh lot of the show, Stone Cold sent him a text. He's like, hey, are you in Philly? And he's like, no. Are you? He's like, no, nah, I guess we're the only ones. <laughs> Basically saying that. Like <laughs> Supposedly, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard that Stone Cold was supposed to be the like the like in the Undertaker's role, um, but they couldn't come to a deal or something like that, so they used the Undertaker instead. Gotcha. I don't know if that's true, but just one of the rumors I saw out there. Yep, yep. So, um. <laughs> Uh, Corny says, I bet Cato peed in OJ's sh shower. <laughs> <laughs> he probably did. And then uh, Robert Higgins says, apologies, I just stepped away to show my wife the Robert Higgins video. She had never seen it. Oh. <laughs> then it turned into a Captain Jenks rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Oh, the great Captain Jenks. Oh, thank oh, God for Jenks. 
Uh, Creepy Girl says, I loved the Mysterio fight. I don't even know who Mysterio fought. Do you guys know? It was a, t- it was a, t- a t- I think him, him versus Dom. Oh, he, he teamed with right? Andrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see yeah, that. Yeah. I saw the graphic, but I didn't see the match. And good for Ray, man. Ray's still going. Oh, yeah. He still looks great. He's in his 50s. Yeah. Um, and she said, in the last one, I loved all the guys coming out. Yeah, that's the one. That's what I didn't like, but <laughs> a lot of people loved it. So that that's what matters. <clears throat> and uh, Robert Higgins says, OJ openly grabbed her privates at a party and said, this is where my babies come from. Wow. Jesus. Mm, okay. Uh, and uh, Tim Truman's hanging out. He says, Bambaleu. I said, just had to finish applying for my 20th job today. Oh, it's rough, Tim. Jesus. Sorry to hear it, bud. All right. Well, we should probably get a move on, right? We wanted to. Was there anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Not really. No, let's get this show on the road. (laughs) Oh, I I do have to mention this one thing. Robert Higgins says, bisexual undertaker cash in money in the bank. I did see (laughs) bisexual undertaker was was, um, trending um on twitter and uh i was like why why is this trending and uh so it's um oh god i can't remember his fucking name punishment martinez was was his name on the indies um fuck <laughs> that's how much i watched <laughs> WWE. i can't i can't remember his fucking name but anyways so the, the guy in the the guy in the judgment day who had the money in the bank and uh won the title so but why bisexual Undertaker? Oh, because I think people are saying he he has like he's tall, has long hair, he's evil, um, and uh, he wear. And I don't know if he's actual actually bisexual, but um, I think because um, actually I don't know. I don't know where it came from, but that's what people are calling him. So that's great. Mark must love that. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, let's see. Evil Corny says, have y'all started Fallout yet? Nope. It. Uh, do you guys even know what Fallout is? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a movie based on the game that just dropped recently. Um, you're half right. Um, it's a TV show. A TV show yeah. based on the game. Yeah. It just yeah. And it's on uh, Prime Video. Yeah, it just came out yeah. um, last night. I think it, it debuted. Um, I will check it out. I, I do like Fallout. Uh, the games, and I've heard a lot of good things about the show. So, um, all right. Before we get too distracted from uh, moving on, uh, okay, real quick because this this came twenty minutes ago, and I forgot to check Facebook. But uh, Doctor Chris is hanging out. What's up, Doctor Chris? And he says OJ joins Keith in hell. Keith. Yeah. Keith Gallenbeck, I'm thinking. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Kenneth Keith Gallenbeck, yeah. Oh, Kenneth. Okay. okay. And, like, who's Keith? Yeah. And he says, American crime story starring Cuba, starring Cuba Gooding Jr. is incredible and worth watching. Yeah. I mean, that probably brought it, you know, to a lot of folks, you know, who weren't, didn't grow up during it. Um, you know, as I think, you know, I, mean, I just remember, it, you know, from being there back in the day, like there was so much stuff. But there was the the Melendez brothers. There was, you know, it was always the the, the, the L.A. riots. L.A. riots. Yeah. yeah. The, the um, early '90s. The early '90s were really violent. Yep. It was a David, really super super violent time. David Koresh, fucking, you know, yeah. the first Columbine, yeah. the fucking yeah, the Wake, Waco uh, Columbine, Unabomber, fucker. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. The fucking. Yep. And the 1990 Cincinnati Reds pitching staff. <laughs> All brutal. <laughs> All brutal. All right. Before we get uh, more distracted, <laughs> uh, let's wrap this up so we can head to the film discussion. So yeah. um, let's see. Oh, we forgot to talk about this, but uh, if you guys are available, we should do the Patreon this weekend. We can talk about it off air, but um, we will be dropping a new Patreon exclusive episode soon. And if you want to hear it, you have to be a Patreon supporter. 
And if you want to be a patron supporter, you can join for as little as $2 a month. That's it. Go to patreon.trickortreatradio.com. And I actually just got an email from Patreon today saying that um, they've had like this new um, chat, um, Patreon chat um, available, but it's only been on the app. And I guess they rolled it out now to um, web browsers as well. So uh, I might just start up a Patreon chat for Patreon supporters. Um, I know we do have the Discord as well, but I, you know, but um, the Patreon ones j- would just be for Patreon supporters. So I might might get that started. So keep an eye out for that. And um, so yeah, if you want to join, you can join for as little as two dollars a month, and it goes up from there. If you want, you can get into the top, the tippy top t- tier. And uh, that'll get you your own Patreon takeover, like Linus had a couple weeks ago. So, Flair. so uh, yeah, Flair, <laughs> Rick Flair, <laughs> <laughs> Rick Flair, <laughs> <laughs> Rick Flair. <laughs> oh, Damian Priest. That's it. Yeah, that's Robert Higgins. Uh, told me, I, yeah, I. Oh, okay. I forgot. I forget his name. I just think of him as a, his indie name. Um, so yeah, so check out Patreon, patreon.trickertreader.com. Um, starts at two bucks. And you know what? If you want to just kind of see what's going on there, you can just uh, follow us for free and you get to see all the updates. You just won't be able to see the stuff that's just for Patreon supporters, but you can at least kind of see what's what's going on over there if you want. So uh, go ahead, check it out, patreon.trickertreader.com. All right. Also, if you guys want to, uh, on trickortreatradio.com, you can use our Amazon link. Just go to the website, trickortreatradio.com, scroll down, and you're going to see the Amazon logo. Click on it. It's going to bring you to Amazon. It's going to input our affiliate link. Everything you purchase in that session gets attributed to us. It doesn't cost them any extra, Michael Raven Shadow. Well, it's another way to help keep the lights on. That's right. So give that a look. And finally, on trickortreatradio.com, you can also click on the store. There we have the greatest hits of Trick or Treat Radio Volumes 1 through 3. It's a little bit of a sampler of the early years of Trick or Treat Radio. So go ahead, give it a look, and uh, let us know what you think. All right, Raven Shadow, you sit down and watch the f- probably the first Estonian film you've ever seen in your life. Uh, it's true. It's a heavy metal kung fu flick. What do you do to prepare for this aside from getting surgery? I mean, I know you got the surgery just for the movie, but True. what else? What did you do to get prepared for well, this? I, I tell you what I don't do. I don't uh, have a cigarette. I don't have uh, an alcoholic beverage. I don't have intimacy in any way. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I bust out some Black Sabbath, take a couple of lorazepam, and you better believe... A strap on. Greetings. We are the Retro Reductopus Cephala Podcast, a bi-weekly show that celebrates all the things that made growing up awesome. He's right. We wax philosophic about lots of geeky crap like old video games and movies, toys, cartoons. I don't know. Help me out here. Music. Pants. Quoting video games that don't have dialogues. Shabibers. Tasty news. Unnecessarily long Japanese onomatopoeia. Butt breathers. Uncomfortable nature facts. Or how to install a samoplange. And unlike all those other podcasts, we at Retro Octopus have an exciting rotating host schedule. Do we? We sure do. So if you didn't like the guy flapping his gums this week, like me, worry not, gentle listener. Next week, we'll have a whole new host. Of problems. Hey. They might still suck, but they'll suck differently. And you know what's really cool? Retro Read Octopus is part of the Inebriard Podcast Network, with new episodes out every Tentacle Tuesday. Which is like every other Tuesday. We named it. Anyways, you can listen to us at iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, I'm Stitcher, Alex West, or I'm Andrea Subasati, and we're from the Faculty of Horror Podcast. And you're listening to Trick or Treat Radio. You go through your week with the same old routine. What you really want is some blood and thunder in your life. Well, friend, you found it. The Chromecast is an adventurous journey through the history of two-fisted pulp stories with your hosts, John, Josh, and Luke. We have action, horror, and adventure, all through the lens of pulp luminary Robert E. Howard. Don't just stay in your ordinary life. 
Find your pulp life at thecromcast.blogspot.com. The Cromcast. The Cromcast. The Cromcast. A podcast for the barbarian at heart. Hey there, this is R.A. Salvatore, call me Bob, and you're listening to Trick or Treat Radio. We are back on Trick or Treat Radio, and uh, we're going to talk about a movie. Let me go ahead and pull it up here. So we're going to talk about the film The Invisible Fight, and this film is um, played in festivals in 2023, and it got an official VOD release and actually a, a theatrical run as well. I think it had a um, a a little theatrical run. In 2024, the film is 115 minutes. It is written and directed by Reiner, uh, Reiner Sarnet, and the film stars Ursul Tilk, Esther Kuntu, Karel Palga, Indrik Samul, and Sepa Tom and Rain Simul, and. Uh, I think I think those are the first Estonian names I've ever uh, spoken out loud <laughs> or even seen for that matter. Um, and uh, yeah, so this film is from Estonia. Um, let's see here. Yep, it was filmed in, I think, in, is it filmed in all of these? I don't know if it was filmed in all of them, but... Um, it says countries of origin, Estonia, Greece, Finland, Latvia. I think that's just people who worked on it. But it's an Estonian production, and it's in Estonian and Russian. And the synopsis for this film, a guard on the Soviet-Chinese border who, after surviving a deadly attack, decides to become a monk, but must continually prove along the way that he's capable of becoming the enlightened man he set out to be. So this uh, this probably isn't the traditional uh, Trick or Treat Radio film, just by hearing about it. People might be like, this is kind of weird, it's not horror. Um, no, it's definitely not horror, but this is one of those genre films that just doesn't necessarily fit into like one genre and this is kind of one of those films at least on the surface i thought it was going to be one of those films that just might be so ridiculous that it could be fun and it could be good so i figured you know what let's just give this one a shot let's give it a go and uh let's see let's see uh what happens and uh we'll find out shortly because uh, I'm dying to know what these guys thought of this movie. Um, but it is, it is an action comedy, but it does have heavy metal. It does have kung fu. 
Uh, it does have comedy. It does have some drama. I, w- I would say there's very little, if any, horror. Um, the only horror would be maybe the inclusion of the idea of demons, um, but that's not necessarily exclusive to horror. So um, I do have, let me see, I have... Um, so here, I think this is a better synopsis. Uh, it's just really brief, but it says, The Invisible Fight is a kung fu comedy set in an orthodox monastery in the Soviet Union during the 1970s. So it's just a bizarre mishmash of, of things that could go horribly wrong or if done correctly, could be, could be a fucking hoot. I could see this going uh, either way for people. So... Well, I was going to give Raven Chad a little bit more time. I he might I think Marion was going to come over and and take care of Ollie. Um so he may be uh indisposed while he's getting her all situated, but um let's I guess let's start. I don't want to I don't want to wait anymore. So, let's do some first impressions. So, I didn't know what to expect other than this film looked ridiculous. That's the only expectation I had is that this could be one of those cult classics or it could fall f- flat on its face. And I have to admit there was some fucking laugh out loud scenes in this. There were some memorable scenes. There were some memorable characters. I think that this does get close to that sort of cult classic um, vibe. Like it has all, like a lot of the elements. Uh, Whether or not it gets there, I think think I'll wait until the verdict to sort of like give my my full feelings. But there is some really funny stuff in this. The, let me just talk about the beginning real quick because um, it, there's an attack. So it, this takes place on the Chinese Russian border. There's an attack of three Kung Fu, uh, three Chinese like Kung Fu masters and they attack uh, a base in Russia and they just lay waste to all of the Russian soldiers, except for one, uh, one survives. But the way that they lay waste to them is by carrying around a boom box that plays the wizard from Black Sabbath over and over. <laughs> and they do um, basically, um, what's the uh, Shaw Brothers? I almost said Shaw Brothers. The, the Shaw Brothers style um, wuxia, like kung fu, where they're like flying and jumping through the air and, and all this. It's, it's wacky. It's crazy. Um, and just that opening scene, like for me, it, it, it hooked me. Like I was, I was in on that scene and I think, um, overall I, that allowed me to give this film a little bit, a little bit more leeway at times. Um, because I think, I think I felt the runtime a a little more than I would have liked in this. But it did give me a little bit extra leeway because that opening scene kind of hooked me. And so from there, um, we won't get into too many of the details. I just wanted to kind of talk about that scene because I think it was important. But um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for me. I want to leave a little bit on the table for us to discuss. And uh, there he is. Okay. Everything all situated, Raven Shadow? Yeah, yeah. Marion came and had to help Oliver get settled. And... Yeah, it's it's cool. That's what I figured. So, sorry, I just gave my first impression. I'll give you a moment, and I'll let MZ go ahead and give his first impression. Okay. Yeah, I thought that, uh, like you said, Wolfie, it's a mishmash of all sorts of different things, and with that, I got the idea that maybe they ran some key components of this film or, or at least the story anyway, through a generator, you know, like an internet generator. And, uh, okay. This takes place when, uh, okay. 1973. And, uh, it's, uh, 
Yeah. Uh, and we have monks and Kung Fu and, uh, and Russian and, and all this other stuff. So it's like, the, it's it, because it, it's just so random. The ideas that they're throwing into this movie and these components that they're throwing in, it's just so random that, and the, the writers are like, okay, let's make something out of this. You know, it, it, it nobody can come up with something like this on the, you know, uh, uh, set out to say, okay, this is what I created. You know, I think that the, I think whoever, you know, the people that made this movie were kind of put in this situation where they were like, okay, this is what we were handed with. These are the components that we're dealing with. Now let's make a movie out of that. Um, but the, but the, but the opening scene, uh, with uh, where there's a whole bunch of kung fu going on and and everything like that, uh, it did hook me in. Uh, it's it's uh, use of um, camera trickery and the old uh, crouching tiger, hidden dragon style type of leaping from tree to tree has been pushed to its to an extended limit. Uh, and it's accentuated by just the sheer ridiculousness of what they do with that. Um, but it's 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 the opening scene. The opening, I would say, third of the film is is truly eye catching. You know, you can't stop looking at it because it's so bizarre. It's so colorful. It's so out there. You know that you can't stop looking at it. So that I was really like hooked in, and I wasn't even really sure what this movie was about. This was like the <laughs> first movie in a long time, if ever, that I didn't check to see what this movie was about. I didn't check the synopsis or anything. I went in completely blind on this. So, but that's how I felt like the first, you know, for the, for the first few minutes that I saw this film, I was I was like, okay. It's interesting. It's too interesting to be boring at this point. And so let's just see what goes from here. But I do also agree with you, Wolfie, that uh, the hour and 55 minute runtime is is a deterrent to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right. How about you, Raven Channel? Like for a minute, and same thing, I didn't know <clears throat> anything going into it um, or the year that it was set in. And we see our heroes like falling. I'm like, ah, this is probably going to be stupid. And then I saw our heroes all line up looking badass, playing some Black Sabbath, <laughs> jumping from tree to tree. And I'm like, you know what? This is going to be awesome. I like how each of their jackets had their own. I think one guy had like a cat, a little kitty cat on the back. Um, and they would jump in tree to tree. Like, was that Wushu style? Is that Wushu? <sighs> I have to look it up again. I think that's Wuxia. There's Wuxia. Um, so Wuxia, which literally means martial arts and chivalry, is a genre of Chinese fiction concerning the adventures of martial artists in ancient China. So I think it's... I'm not positive if it's if it's like a one-to-one -one comparison, but like, like um, a Giallo film is you know, is like a, a certain thing. You can say it's it's giallo, whereas like here you could say it's wuxia, and then you know you know what it means. You know, yeah. Because I was thinking more like Shaw Brothers than Crouching Tiger. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Definitely Shaw Brothers because of the uh, the sort of campiness of it. Whereas like when you know hit, um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is an amazing movie, but it's done all serious, right? Like. All that stuff. Yeah, they weren't. Yeah, they they weren't carrying around a cassette, their own theme music, <laughs> you know. And I liked how they were, you know, they, they had a great gimmick, you know, attacking the the um, the Russian base. That was awesome. Uh, so it was really along for the ride from that point out. And I kind of I was kind of a bum bummed out that we didn't see that that team anymore. I know, right? As the movie progressed and. And then I, I guess you kind of forgot because I'm like, oh, well, maybe they were trying to bust out the other character, the, the, what was his name? The Russian guy. Um, 
wasn't Sergio or whatever his You're name. You talking about the, the main the main character? Yeah, the clown, uh, the Raphael. Raphael. Yeah. Um, but I'd forgotten. I'm like, oh no, that was the guard. They kind of let live. Yeah, he was the yeah he was inspired by them. So. And that's why his mom was like, I don't know what happened to you. You grew your hair out. He learns kung fu. And, <laughs> Listen to Black Sabbath. <laughs> Black Sabbath. You know. Uh, so I, I I was into it. I, I was into it. Um, now, it, if I missed Wolfie's point, yeah, a little, little bit long, a little long, um, but but I was into it. All right. So let's dive in a little bit deeper then. So, yeah, I did see the trailer on this because um, I had been we had been sent um, a just sort of like a PR um, email about it. And that's sort of what got it on our radar because I hadn't heard about it prior to that. So kind of taking a look at that and it was like, okay, this this sounds kind of ridiculous. Like I want to kind of keep an eye on this because initially it just hit theaters. So I wanted to keep an eye out to see when it was going to come out on VOD. And uh, so sure enough, you know, it, it hit. And just like one of the images for like that, that was included – in the initial email actually let me see if i can pull it up real quick i just i'm curious what scene it was now that i've seen the movie um let's see here yeah so january i heard about this back in january okay yeah so the the picture is um rafael in his full monk um get up and it's when he's floating in air above like the muffler and there's that Russian oh, guy. Oh yeah. yeah. That oh. that's the image <laughs> that was included. And I was like, okay, this looks absolutely fucking ridiculous. I have to, you know, see what the fuck is going on here. So um just a couple here's a couple of the reviews that were included in that. Um, this is from Peter De Bruges in Variety. He says the invisible fight treats Kung Fu as comedy landing like a cross between Shaolin soccer and Jim Cotta, but with better production values and orthodox monks. <laughs> nice Jim Cotta pull. I know. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but sure. You're a big fan of Jim Cotta. I do love Jim Cotta quite a bit. <laughs> and then the other one was from, uh, Mariana Haristova from Sinaropa says an entertaining universe to be observed and relished. Estonian Helmer Reiner Sarnet deploys an explosive mix of Kung Fu, heavy metal and Orthodox Christianity. <laughs> so when I saw that, I was like, oh man, like this just sounds like such a bizarre fucking thing. Like when are we ever going to like put these three things together ever again? Right. Right. <laughs> so, I had I had to and I was not, I'm glad that we watched it honestly like this this you know this we'll see where this lands but I am glad that I saw this movie because it is something it is something else and I think you touched on it a little bit MZ but the way that this was made it looked fucking beautiful like I, I love the way this movie looked the way it was made and it did have that sort of like 70s feel to it you could see the film grain and it yeah. everything like the set design everything felt like it was out of the 70s and you know i i appreciated that um yeah but it yeah it looked it it was very impressive very impressive looking even some of the stunts i thought were i'm like how did they do this on it had to have been a small fucking budget right like this right. felt like a kind of a big budget movie at times with uh, some of the stunts that they were pulling off, so I don't know. Did what, did you do? You guys agree with that? Do you think the 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 like the look of it made it feel like it was a bigger budget than it actually was? Oh sure, sure. Uh, I I mean I don't know what the budget for this film was, but it, but at times it did feel like it was a lot larger than whatever the amount is. I have like I said, I have no idea what yeah, it was. But I'll look and see if I can find it, out. It, Okay, but it it did feel like a big budget film from time to time. Um, I mean, as far as the stunts go, though, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, there's, I mean, there's obvious wire work, and but the but the thing about this here is that the filmmakers aren't trying to hide that. 
they're making it very obvious that this is why it work. And it's not, and I'm not saying that in the way that you get to see the effect working on screen. You don't, it, you know, it, it's, you still don't see anything, but just the way the characters are floating in the air or flying through the air, you know, it's obvious why it work and they're not making any, you know, they're not trying to fool anybody. They know. And, but that's part of the gag. That's part of the comedy of it mm -hmm. is that is, is that the wire work is a little shoddy looking. It's not trying to be perfect, you know, and, and that's part of its appeal is, is at least as far as the battle scenes go anyway. Uh, it's, 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 it's amusing to see, you know, it, and it's good to see somebody not take it so seriously as well. Yeah. And the characters believe it, you know. I think I think there was a cool. I never saw uh, uh, I never saw pasta be a threat uh, like that. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> you know, and and the dumpling scene. Oh maybe, fuck! Maybe oh, yeah, yeah the dumpling scene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I got to say too the the actors. I mean, obviously, we you know it was in Estonian and and partially in Russian, I think as well, but. So, you know, like there's always that sort of thing when when you're watching a movie with, that speaks a language that you don't that um, I mean, you can tell a good performance when you see it. But in terms of like you're busy reading the, the subtitles and sometimes that you can miss some of the delivery and things like that. Um, but I have to say that I thought that the two. Well, I'd say maybe like the four main characters I thought we're all really well acted and, and were likable. Like Raphael, even though he was like a, he was a fuck up um, at times. Like I thought Ursul Tilk who played Raphael was like really endearing. And like, he played that sure. role really well. Yeah. yeah. He's a very, a very likable character. Yeah. And very he, likable. I also um, liked Irene, the, the monk that he kind of teamed up with. And, uh, yeah. I thought he, I thought he was really good as well. Like his performance um really sold a lot of the stuff cuz he had to play kind of the the straight man to Raphael's like buffoonery, right? Like <laughs> mm -hmm. And um then I forget the um I don't know the the main monk. It might be uh Nafa Nail. I think that was it. Um but anyways. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that. He he he's the one that had like the that looked like a black metal robe, like it had like the 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 writing yeah. on it. Um, I yeah. thought he was really pretty funny as well, and also kind of like endearing. Um, so I really like those characters. And then there's um, Rita, played by oh. Esther Kuntu, who I thought also was very very good and very believable. So I mean, those four. I mean, a lot of the movie, and also, like, let me just add the, um, I don't know the her name because it's not. Oh, mother. Okay, it just Lisa's mother. Um, the mom, yeah, yeah. yeah Maria Av Avjushko, um, as the mother. I thought she was fucking awesome too. Like, just her reactions and like the the facial expressions and everything were just so fucking spot on, and she just like was. It, it added some like levity and comedy, even though it wasn't necessarily supposed to be, because she's really kind of distraught about her son going to this monastery, you know. Right, right, right. Here's some bread and some vodka. You know? Oh like, no, fried bread. <laughs> fried bread, yeah, yeah, fried bread. And what, vodka. Yeah. What'd she say? You you like um, was it wheat? I can't remember what she kept saying. You you like you like wheat or something like that. She's like, have some fried bread. <laughs> But um, yeah, I mean, overall, I thought the the characters were all really kind of endearing, and um, you know, I, I I liked. I think that went for me that went a long way to to really helping to sort of like tie you know to connect you to the film you know through those performances, um, you know, because we don't we don't speak Estonian or Russian, so watching it, it's like, you know, it's it's sort of it can be difficult to engage with them, but they're, I think the performances were so good that it was really easy to. Yeah. Um, 
what did you guys feel that they overused uh, the song "The Wizard" from Black Sabbath? A little um, bit, yeah. But, but they probably paid for it, so you got to use it, right? I mean, that was the only track they had. Um, oh, they had another which, one too. Which would make sense. No, they had another one. Did they? I think there was two. Yeah, I think it was two Black Sabbath songs at least. Oh, look, the, the fact that a, a film like this could even get one Black Sabbath song, I mean, that's a feather in their cap already. Yes? Yeah. I mean, because, I, I mean, you don't really put Estonia and Black Sabbath together, you know, it's just, <laughs> you know, until at least until this film was made. Um, I, I thought the use of, of Black Sabbath was a riot, you know, <laughs> uh, especially with the way Raphael reacts to it. And how yeah, and yeah. how he moves when the music is playing, uh, it it just totally uh, belies the effort that he's putting in to becoming a monk, you know. And with that with that uh, conflict of interest, I guess you could say, you know, it, it 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 puts him in a pretty precarious situation, and he handles it in, in ways that are pretty funny. I got to say, you know. And it's funny, like kind of, kind of like it kind of bonds like the look that he adopted, you know, with the cross and the you know, all black, and then he comes in long hair, and then comes across the monks, you know, who rock crosses, black, you know, and and wear long hair. Yeah. Um, like, I remember uh, years ago when I first started my 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 main job, there was a Orthodox um, like priest that would that would come to the restaurant, and he'd be like, "Who's that fucking Jedi?" Like. Cause he would have all the black robes looking badass and stuff long, you know, long hair, like, uh, Bob De Niro and angel heart. I'm like, who is this? What's this guy all about? Um, <laughs> and he's cool. And actually we have a friend who, who's, you know, done some of the Russian Orthodox, their Russian Orthodox Easter's coming up. So, um, so I don't know, somehow black Sabbath meets, you know, Russian religion. And you get some kind of badass kung fu Jedi's out of it. Yeah, and so I didn't know this heading in. I actually I'm glad that we had um, the press kit because it actually gave a lot of information. Um, so a couple things. Let me see if I can find the quote. I I do know that um, the Soviet Union attempted to outlaw religion. Um. So, yeah, the communist government targeted religions based on state interests. And while most organized religions were never outlawed, religious property was confiscated. Uh, believers were harassed and religion was ridiculed while atheism was propagated in schools. So that's why, like, this movie is, like, kind of punk in a couple ways because of, like, the heavy metal. Um, you know, because religion, <laughs> you weren't able to really practice it or... It had to be very sort of under 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 um, wraps. Underground. Yeah, like for instance, like when that KGB guy comes at the end, right? Like he, they say something about confiscating all the crosses and and, and whatnot. So right, right. that's that's where you know that's why that makes sense. And also, I think I'm not sure, but I think it was Kung Fu was you couldn't. Okay, yeah, here it is, actually. I found the quote. Um, Just as religion, martial arts were also forbidden in the Soviet, Soviet Union, so it is sort of a double rebellion. This is from the director. He says, um, I also chanced upon a website called Death to the World, run by an ex-punk Orthodox monk. There was a line, the last true rebellion is the monastery, so that Kung Fu, Black Sabbath, and the monastery joined together by rebellion. Like, that's sort of why he, like, he went with that, you know. Um, also, MZ, I wanted to, this is kind of a counterpoint to what, to what you had said about how someone could have come up with this. And, and it seems like they, like, fed it into, like, a, you know, like a, a generator, like an internet generator or something. And um, so he says... So the question, this is an interview, the question says, the invisible flight contains a blend of elements that are seemingly incompatible. Kung Fu, Black Sabbath, Soviet era, Orthodox Church, 
how did this mix arise and become a cohesive movie? So this is Rainer um, uh, Sar Sarnat. Um, he says, it all started when I brought my friend in the hospital a book called Not of This World. It contained real life stories of two Orthodox monks who both died young. The gift was meant to be taken with black humor. We are both fans of decadence. My friend proposed an idea to make a movie about monks. So he gave me a present in return. The story that stood out for me in this book spoke about a young monk, Father Raphael, who was active in the Soviet Union during the 70s at the monastery in Peccary. I, I began to explore the era, and it turned out that many young Russian monks were ex-hippies. There was a resistance to the material world, and as hippies, Orthodox monks wear their hair long, have black clothes, and there are skulls in the catacombs. You might say that their universe seemed quite rock and roll to me. The idea to use the music of Black Sabbath developed from there and to start the arc of the protagonist with some kind of rebellious act. For him, the catalyst is outer coolness, like it is with youth. Exploring Father Raphael's life, it turned out that he had served in the armor, army near the Chinese border. His military unit was attacked by Chinese bandits, and he alone survived. At that point, the thought of adding kung fu emerged. Raphael sees the Chinese use it while in the army, and it inspired him to learn. So this is actually based on um, <laughs> real life story uh, from this book, Not of This World. So the idea of, of you know, like this Father Raphael uh, surviving an attack by the Chinese bandits in a Russian camp was was legit. So that, that part's legit. Um, you know, but he just sort of saw an opportunity to mix these things together, these all these things that were kind of rebellious at the time, right? So religion, um, heavy metal, and kung fu, all sort of things that were, um, you know, kind of rebellious at the time. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting how he decided to kind of marry those things together. And in, in doing so, I feel like this movie... I don't think it's necessarily about religion. Like I don't think while religion yeah. is, is a big part of it, I think, I think it's used as a vehicle um, to sort of like fight your own demons. Right. That's why they call it the invisible yeah. fight. Um, it's the opponent isn't someone you can see. It's the invisible fight is your, you know, your, your own demons, your, your judgments, your whatever. So I thought that was interesting to sort of tie it in into that way and make it this ridiculous thing while tell, still kind of telling a kind of a, a, I don't know if I call it a coming of age story, but like the character has a very clear, um, um, you know, plot. Um, what am I trying to say? The, uh, a very clear like path A to point B, uh, path path A yeah. to path, to to B, and a through line. Yeah, you know, like a very clear narrative through line of growth, right? And he thinks that he really wants to be a monk, and he does learn a lot, but you know, ultimately, it, it's it's not exactly what he wanted. But I also feel like there's there's an element too of I've never read the Bible. I'll readily admit that. So I don't know how accurate this is, but um, I almost feel like he's almost like a, like a, like a Christ like character where he comes to this monastery and he kind of teaches them like something they were so like kind of by the book and he kind of teaches them something else that they didn't, they had maybe forgotten or weren't, paying attention to and so they sort of like evolve a little bit as well from him being there you know so i thought i don't know i, I feel like even though this is a religious film in, in a sense because it takes place in an orthodox christian monastery um i don't really necessarily think it's a religious film did you guys have have any thoughts on that uh i felt i I felt that uh, I felt a little bit of a religious push in this film, actually. Uh, well, gonna, uh, well, when you and just to be clear, do you do you feel like it it was preachy? 
That was the word I was about to use. Oh, okay. Yeah. I because I didn't think that uh, at all. Well, this is where I felt the film started to lag a little bit because you know because we were talking about the runtime as well. You know, I, because what what it is here is that the first, like I said, the first like thirty minutes of this film is just a total banger. Okay, it's awesome. Everything is just crazy, you yeah. know, uh, just wild and and zany. And I mean, as, uh, probably my favorite scene in the entire film was the dance hall uh, <laughs> scene, oh, where yeah. you know, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Just everybody doing this whole thing or whatever. But it was just wild and colorful, and and Raphael is just moving around the way he is, you know, and shit like that. Then when he gets into the to the monk portion of his life, you know, it, I mean, it's still a story about him. It's still a story about him wanting to become a monk and trying to change his ways and all this other stuff. And but I did feel that the film started to become a little preachy in in regards to towards religion. Uh, not, not, I mean, I don't know anything really about religion. I'm I never read the Bible like you and, uh, you know, so I, th I, you know, I think because of that, uh, I think any talk about religion in so much time, uh, I would probably find to be a little preachy, you know, because I'm not a religious person. So any talk about religion, you know, over an extended period of time, is going to come off as a little preachy towards me, uh, especially where it's especially where at times it's played very very serious. There's no wackiness. There's no uh, 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 just odd things going on. I mean, in sporadic scenes as the film continues at the monastery, we do get that because we do get to see uh, Raphael come out of his uh, monk uh, insp inspirations and just show off his his either his air guitar mode or his <laughs> his uh, way to headbang or 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 uh, or his ability for kung fu yeah so the, it does bring that it back in just a little bit but not too much uh, but not too much to the point where I felt that when they started talking about religion, and his faith and all this other stuff is where I felt that it started getting a little preachy. And and at that point, I felt like, okay, the movie's start doing this. It's getting a little long. So it does. So for me, it does lag in the middle quite a bit. Yeah, I think for me, I think I felt a little bit of the runtime in the third act, um, not the very end. Like I like the end. But there was a time, I think it was when um, Rita was at the monastery and then, and you know, I, I felt like we got some exposition that just wasn't too necessary. Like when she's talking to those other two women um, in the monastery, yeah. that, that scene seemed like it was a little bit too long. And there was some stuff about that. I, I feel like they could have truncated that a little bit and made that a little bit more snappy. But I mean, overall, I didn't, I don't think it, it, like took away from my enjoyment of the film. I just feel like there could have been like a really like slim trim 90 minute cut here yeah. that would have been fucking awesome. And, you know, I just feel like um, some of the scenes were just a little bit too long, but overall, like it didn't, there's so much going on here that I feel like it 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 doesn't necessarily take away from it too much. It just it starts to lose me a little bit, and then a lot of times when they come back, there's something that like pulls me all the way back, you know. So it might be sort of like disengaging a little bit, and then they'll do something, and that is like, oh, okay, now we're back. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> um, especially the at the end when what brought me back was when uh, he when Raphael. Um, fights Irene, like in the catacombs. You know, like that right. whole scene was fucking awesome. So, like, that's what yeah. really got me back after like a little bit of a 
a, a drudge to get back there. So, um, yeah, I, I think, I mean, it definitely affected the runtime definitely affected the film a little bit, but it wasn't such a negative mark that it's, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna make the film. It's, it's not going to move it from like, if it was a treat, it's not going to move it to a trick, you know, but it just might not be as memorable. It wouldn't be a deal breaker. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and just to, just to my thought on the on the religion aspect, I, I didn't think it was overpowering. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like you know a, a Kirk Cameron related you know type religion kind of thing. Like, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I saw it more as like it, they could be Jedi's. They could be the Irish Kagi monks that like snake guys and storm shadows go in you know deal with or whatever the fuck Liu Kang you know does in Mortal Kombat like it just seemed like you know they were fun loving monks yeah and I mean never never mean no harm yeah monks all monks have a code right like whether it's um Buddhism um whatever you know whatever it is yeah the the, it, it it's mostly about um restraint in a way and like following um some sort of beliefs or ideals or code or something like that so for humility me, which is a big thing about you yeah know, don't fuck up here yeah you know? so for me that really wasn't um it wasn't really it didn't take away from it um for me because it's just that's just what they happen to use for this um because like i said you know, in in the story in the book that he based this off of, or got inspiration from, I should say, it was about Orthodox uh, monks. You know, Christian Christian monks, and at the time, that was kind of like punk rock in in this, in, in the Soviet Union because you weren't supposed to be doing that. So, and I uh, believe even Orthodox priests can take uh, wives too. Um, okay, they don't they don't have that whole fucking because the the dude I I knew um, was like, yeah, you know. How how's a guy gonna come to me about you know marital advice if I can't have a wife? And you're like you goddamn right. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask some dude who ain't never had a chick about you know female stuff. You want someone that knows, mm-hmm. um, so they can you know they don't have that kind of trope. They can they can marry. I think they're they're women priests too, and they can marry too. They're partying over there. <laughs> Even after cataract, cataract surgery, yeah, you gotta wait two weeks. But yeah, and, and <laughs> everyone's partying. <laughs> let me um, let me read a little bit more from this interview, um, because I I feel like this gives some good insight. So it says, this is the the interviewer says, what does the film talk about? The burden of being human and the responsibility that comes with it. Is that something you ponder a lot? And so Ryanair says, uh, for me, the invisible fight is about authenticity. Be who you are. My protagonist is dumb and joins the monastery for the wrong reasons, but he is authentic in his stupidity, and that is crucial for any kind of development. The fake does not evolve. You need to have some sort of an infantile open mind. The gospel emphasizes the role of a child. We are children of God. Our relation to God is like that of a child who is to be forgiven and loved. Finding and maintaining that childish spirit was crucial while making this film and writing it. I tried to switch off the intellectual role of a grown-up as best I could in me and also in Raphael. I discovered that my 10-year-old son is a fan of the film as well as the son of our producer. Uh, Some kind of childish spirit entered the invisible fight. I do not dwell much on how to be human, at least not consciously. Um, It goes on and on. But the thing I liked about that at the beginning was that it's about authenticity. And entering sort of with, you know, a, a childlike wonder, you know, and honestly, like that, maybe it'll still sound silly, but that's something, um, something I want to try to do more of is to have more of like a beginner's mind, be curious about things, you know, because if you approach something and you think you know about it, you're not going to learn anything because you think you already know everything. So if you approach things from, a, a beginner's perspective, or in this case, like the f- the fool, like if you if you're talking about uh, whether it's uh, tarot cards or like the fool's journey, like 
otherwise known as the hero's journey. Um, right. You have to be not like a little naive and a little have like this childlike wonder to to learn something because otherwise, if you're if you if you like go into something thinking you know everything there is to know about it, you're not going to learn anything. And right. so I think that's interesting. And and he talks about it like being about authenticity. And in this, you know, we see Raphael and he thinks he knows what he wants to be. And then sort of when he does that, he, he's not really cut out for, for it necessarily. Uh, he, I think he could have been, but I think he realizes that, um, he, he was able to learn from it though, and then kind of take from, something from that. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I, I like that part of what, of what he's saying there is that, um, you know, he also says playing a fool is an ancient art form because it unlocks something in the human essence that we keep hidden all the time, our imperfection. Hmm. So if we, you know, if we approach something thinking we're perfect or we don't have anything to learn, then, then we're just shut off from learning. Um, so I think it, it is important that <laughs> that this character um, is kind of a fool and an idiot, you know, and, and he approaches things in that way. So... Um, yeah, I just thought that was, uh, that was cool to see that sort of insight. Does make sense. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can, there's some, there's a lot of good stuff in here. I just don't want to, you know, just read from an interview, um, over and over. So, um, I think I'll just, yeah, maybe I'll just, just stop reading from that. Um, the, I thought the fighting was actually pretty, pretty good. Um, there's not a lot of Kung Fu, but what there is, I thought was actually pretty, pretty impressive. Like, especially that, you know, the scene between Raphael and, um, I keep forgetting his name, Irene, uh, Irene, Irene, Irene yeah. um, like the, the, the fight scene that we saw at the, at the end with them. And then also, as you mentioned, I think it was MZ that mentioned the, um, with the, the pot, was it you Raven Child, the pasta? You mentioned that? Yeah, 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 yeah pasta. Okay. And a, no, one, no one can catch a a, a, a dumpling. Yeah, the the <laughs> the pasta and the dumpling um, scenes were fucking hilarious. <laughs> the um, I, I I do love the one scene where he gets uh, he gets uh, kind of mind powers. He's like, oh, do me a favor. Yeah, turn the light on for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. The when they're using the dumplings, um, I love that. Uh, Irene, like he catches them like, you know, like this, you know, like perfectly where they don't bend yeah, or yeah. anything. And then he throws them to Raphael and like just fucking slaps, slaps his fucking forehead and like drops down. That whole scene was, was hilarious. Um, yeah. So that stuff, like, yeah, the dance MC had mentioned, um, there was a lot of really kind of ridiculous scenes and the opening scene with, that we've talked about kind of a lot now um, with the, with the, Chinese bandits, Chinese kung fu masters yeah. was uh yeah. was fucking hilarious. <laughs> That's how the movie fucking starts out too. It's <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you don't so yeah, good. you don't get you don't get the uh the title screen until some ways into the film. And I, I also like the title cards as well. Uh yeah, yeah. The, the yeah. chapter card the chapter cards, I guess you could call them. They're done with uh they're done with this, uh, this maybe like uh, pseudo '60s style type of, you know, uh, Ronan Martin's laughing type of lettering. You know, with the, you know, the, the the lettering, the letters are like all wavy and and bent and everything like that, kind of giving like yeah. a psychedelic effect and using all sorts of different colors to show that off. And so, I mean, that just accentuated the the early 70s vibe mm -hmm. that this movie was trying to portray yeah it came off pretty well too I, I i really enjoyed that part of it actually yeah it i mean it just fit the whole aesthetic right it was it was yeah. they did a really good job of like this i i might have actually almost believed that this film was from the 70s at times right like yeah, yeah. there's times when if 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 someone had said I mean, the, the, it looked a little bit too clean, you know, and, and too good. Um, but if someone had said, you know, this is a, a cleaned up uh, 70s film, like 
I might have been like, you know what? Yeah, I could kind of see it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think what else. I, there's. I feel like there's so much to, to talk about with this, but um, I don't want to belabor the point and and keep you know keep talking about it if if we're wrapping up here. Um, anything else that comes to mind for you guys? Um. Oh God. Uh, hmm. Not really. I mean, I'm, well, I'm sure there is, but I mean, it's like God. There's just so much going on here. Um. I, I feel like you know we were talking about how it labors in the middle, because the 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 opening like say half hour of the film is just so. It, it it's just totally out there so wacky uh and so vibrant so colorful so you know in your face just bonkers with not only styles and 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 the way people look and and things of that nature but also how the film is presented with with you know interesting camera movements or or special effects with the camera you know you know it's just very uh fast paced you know but but it, but I don't know if that's what we're supposed to believe now that I think about it. The you know we get this while we're in the outside world, then things start to slow down in that regard once we hit the monastery, and we get little bits and pieces of that outside world in terms of fast motion camera movements or different angles or even sound effects because there was a small scene. <laughs> it, it caught me off completely off guard. I wasn't expecting it. But I enjoyed the hell out of it, where they have the sound effects for when their eyes are blinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was. It only happened a couple of times, but it just caught me totally off guard, and I loved it. I'm like, holy mm-hmm. shit! You know, I don't know why I loved it so much. Maybe it's because uh, I felt the monotony of the monastery, that this little piece of of bizarreness that belongs in the outside world away from the monastery and away from the monks has somehow crept its way in, you know, and I, maybe that's probably what it is. And that's probably what it is with a lot of the stuff with, with a lot of the stuff that happens in this film within the monastery, because it does get tend to creep in more and more as the film continues. So you get this wild, wacky shit going on. Then it lulls in the middle when you hit the monastery, but then it starts to, but then that wackiness at the beginning starts to drip its way into the monastery as the film progresses. I don't know. Do you guys feel that way? Um, Did you guys notice that, or 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 am I just thinking making it up? Well, I don't think you're making it up. Um, you're talking about how like it just fe- seemed like the focus was on the monastery for a while. It just kind of stayed there. Well, yeah, uh, but but it just felt stagnant because it was the monastery. It just felt stagnant. So it's, it's, to a degree, I, I I didn't necessarily mind the the monastery stuff. Um, I think it was uh, like I said, some of the scenes were just kind of outstayed their welcome a little bit, especially in the for me it was the third act more so, um, mm-hmm. because uh, I you know as someone who likes kung fu movies uh, a lot of a lot of that stuff takes place in monasteries there's a lot of downtime where in between fights and stuff like that so i think for me that was just sort of par par for the course you know um so it didn't really bother me that much how about you raven channel yeah i mean i i liked i liked the uh some of the uh surprising eating habits of some of the veteran uh monks <laughs> um and the reasons why, I thought that was kind of uh, kind of clever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just checking the chats. Let's see. Uh, Tim Truma said this is a little while ago. He said uh, Shaw Brothers was a factory pr- to produce movies. Dude goes and takes a shit, and he's in three movies for the day. <laughs> he said you can track the location, sets, and actors from movie to movie. The older actors got to play the cool bad guy roles. And he talked about Kung Fu comedy being an entire genre um, with Stephen Chow, um, you know, oh, sure. 
doing a lot. Yeah, I, I you know, I love uh I do love Stephen Chow and um I feel like this is a little to me the Stephen Chow movies that that I'm familiar with, I haven't seen all of them, but like Shaolin Soccer um I forget the other one I was thinking of. Um but anyways, it's it's almost like taking sort of like the kung fu movie premise and putting it in like a different um like like in that it's like soccer you know putting it in a different setting um whereas this i feel is more of the traditional sort of like monastery where you learn um but it just so happens that it takes place in the 70s and has heavy metal and you know and all that so that's sort of like the the twist on it i guess yeah, I don't think I don't think this is more of a comedy. I, I think it had comedy elements to it, but I don't think it was the uh, the over over um what's the word I'm looking for over, overarching uh, theme. Yeah, didn't didn't over do, didn't dominate. Um, I mean, you know, you're right. You know, no, he's right. You know, he's right because there were a lot of times where, I mean, once we got into the monastery things did start to die down a little bit i mean as far as i'm concerned for for humor uh a lot of that stuff happened early on uh there were a couple of chuckle moments you know but nothing overly hilarious you know yeah um one thing i did one thing oh, oh go ahead, go ahead. no go ahead i was just gonna transition go ahead Oh, I was going to transition myself uh, to uh, as now as far as stunts go. Um, I mean, yeah, the wire work is good. You know, it's it's hilarious uh, in that in the regard that uh, you know it's kind of a little sloppy. You know, they don't hide the fact that it's wire work. The 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 real stunt for me was when they were driving. Was when uh, oh yeah yeah yeah. I'm glad you brought that was, up. When, yeah, it was when they were driving, when uh, uh, Raphael's driving and uh, the other monk, uh, oh, oh. Irene. Irene is in the passenger seat. I mean, they're showing, and they're showing him swerving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I just keep thinking to myself, man, I don't know much about Estonian car making, <laughs> but. Man, something tells me that thing is going to take a flying leap at any given moment. He's not a good driver. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he's not a good driver. <laughs> and then when the steering wheel comes off the car. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. The, um, uh, yeah, there, there's a, there's a few really good scenes in the car. Like, I was like amazed at how you're right, like how they were doing those things without having it like go fucking flying. So um, I thought that was pretty hilarious. Um, and then, you know, when it finally does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, that, that whole scene when, um, or, or when he's like pushing the, uh, um, pushing the car up the, up the hill, he had to yeah. uh, push yeah. it up the hill. <laughs> or the KGB guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when he started getting into a battle with the KGB guy, and he's like, he's like as good as kung fu as Raphael. Is. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> like, his fucking that's weapon. So goddamn random. He pulls the muffler off the car. He uses it as a fucking weapon, <laughs> <laughs> like the whole muffler, not just the end. Yeah, the whole <laughs> like goddamn the whole muffler. Thing. Like it he just goes pulls all the way it right yeah. off under the car and just <laughs> yanks it right out. <laughs> oh god, it's so fucking funny. And I love that scene when when he's like like standing on the muffler, and then he, when yeah, he like yeah. any like how he ends the fight, I thought was really funny too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, well let's uh, let's wrap it up and let's head to the verdict on this one. Trick or treat, baby. I wonder if people would say you're a trick or a treat. All right, verdict time. We're going to let you know whether the invisible fight was a trick or a treat. And any final thoughts? Let's kick it off with MZ. That opening 30 minutes is really bizarre. So bizarre that you can't take your eyes off of it. Uh, Just the style, 
the look of it, just the way people move. It's just truly, truly bizarre and definitely one to look for uh, that opening 30 minutes. Then, you know, we start learning more and more about Raphael, and that's great too. But when we get to the monastery, I feel that's when things start to lag. That second act lags, and it takes a long time. This is a hour and 55 minute movie they could and i agree with wolfie they could have easily shaved off 25 maybe a half an hour off of this movie um and i think a lot of that rests in that second act it's just it, it it's it's somewhat dull uh, especially in comparison to that to that opening 30 minute segment uh it, it's still somewhat colorful it's it's still got a little bit of life into it uh with sound effects or 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 with camo tricks or or whatever you know kung fu or or hell even some black sabbath you know but i don't think it's but the it just it's just it just feels dreary to me you know i mean and when you couple that with the fact that this is supposed to be a film or it's just supposed to take place in the in the early 1970s early 1970s estonia mind you you know it it does tend to get a little boring you know and there were times where i was looking at my watch uh but there are but there are some interesting things going for it past that 30 minute segment there is the mu the music from black sabbath there is the kung fu there is the funny tamra tricks there is occasional humor, but nothing knee slapping. You're not gonna fucking drop dead laughing from this stuff. You know, it's okay. humorous. It's it's humorous. It's not laugh out loud funny. Uh, it, it may even be a satirical look at uh, at uh, monasteries and the people who join them. Possibly, maybe it could be looked at as 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 a satire. Um, but you know, I wasn't too sure what to, how I was going to, uh, 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 rate this. Uh, I did have a, I, I, I thought about giving it a tepid treat because it does tend to get a little preachy or at least I felt it did. Plus it's running time was a little, a little too long, uh, you know, and it and it does get boring in that second act. I thought the third act was fine. the The second act though was a little boring. Uh, the the people played their parts great. You know, everyone was good. Uh, I've never heard of any of these people before. I'll probably never hear of them ever again. Uh, and I will say honestly, if it wasn't for this podcast, I probably never would have seen this movie at all. Will I ever see it again? Probably not. But uh, but if I ever do, I'll stick around for that opening thirty minute segment because that's a blast. Um, so everything's good. I'm going to give this movie a tepid treat. It's it's flawed. Uh, it's overly long, but there are points to it that will give that I feel will give it a pass. It's not entirely my kind of movie, but I could see where other people can enjoy the hell out of it. All right, Michael Raven Shadow. Yeah, you know, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Uh, it was nice uh, diversion from what we've been watching lately this year. Um, I agree. Maybe shave off uh, fifteen minutes or so to it, but uh, but overall, it was fun. I would like a Raphael T-shirt. I would rock that. Um, and I'm a big Rita fan, and uh, I would buy a PVC set of the three uh, Kung Fu Bandits than the beginning. Uh, <laughs> With their uh, with the tape recorder, uh, nunchucks and swords. Uh, so, yeah, it was it was fun. Check it out. It was a treat. <laughs> uh, all right. So for me, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess I pretty much said. I, I think anyone who heard me talk about it probably knows what I'm what I'm going to say, but I think there's enough here that this is this is a treat. Um, there, the concept alone to be able to pull it off, to have it be so entertaining at times, I think is is really kind of a, a big victory. You know, it does, as we talked about, it does lag a little bit. And to me, it, it's it's forgivable. Like it's 
they could have edited more, but it, it doesn't completely take me out of it and make me, you know, like just not want to not want to watch the rest. It, it right. you know, it, it it had its moments um, where it started to lose me, but then it it usually brought me back in pretty quickly. So and when it did, it pulled me all the way back. It wasn't it wasn't like. You know, it's it's like I had like a little bit of a tether and they're kind of letting it out, letting it out, letting it out. And then, you know, it's not like they pulled me back a little bit. It's like they pulled me all the way back and I was like back to, you know, to being engaged. So there was enough of that that made it um, really fun and exciting. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a treat. I, th- I think people should uh, should check this out. I mean, it's not going to be for everybody. That's for sure. But it the premise is just so fucking out there and to see that they actually pulled this off, I think is really kind of impressive and it delivers some really good performances and it's just, it's just a lot of fun. So I don't know. I think people should check it out. It is a VOD and, uh, or you can, I think it's available physical now. Kino Lorber is uh, putting it out. Um, so you can go ahead, check, take a look and uh yeah if you find it give it a watch i think i think people will dig it so that is going to wrap up our discussion of the invisible fight and it's going to wrap up the film discussion uh let's see next week it's between two movies um because the next week there's a really good movie coming out that we've been anxiously awaiting. Um, so let me just see here. Okay. So this one comes out. Let me just um, take a quick look and see if this other, I think this other one just came out today. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm kind of, I think I'm going to go in this direction. Oh, wait. Is it out today? Sorry, I'm. I'm <laughs> I I I thought this was going to be the one, but um, I just want to make sure it's out. So we don't have any voice messages right now. Um, but is there anything else you guys wanted to bring up before we start to wrap up here? And I'll I'll I just want to look up and see if this movie is is indeed available before next week. Huh. Huh. Oh. Um. Well, uh, I just, I read before we got on the air, I read that, uh, there is, this isn't horror, but ironically, although ironically I saw it on bloody disgusting that, uh, the project for a live action transformers GI Joe movie has been greenlit. I did hear about that. Wait, say that again. GI Joe transformers live action movie has been greenlit. Transform, well, like Transformers talking. versus G.I. Joe? <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be... I, well, if it's Transformers versus G.I. Joe, it's not going to be a very long movie. <laughs> well, uh, it probably ties into the shared universe they're building um, that Kirkman's doing with Image. Um, and I, I found out... I didn't watch it, but what was the most recent Transformers movie? Was it Beast Wars? Beast Wars, yeah. There's an end, cre- end credit scene yeah, where... Um, yeah. This is like a dossier. I have to watch that where it mentions like a GI Joe logo. Yeah, it. I watched that. I watched that. Yeah, I don't. I I haven't seen it yet, but I guess I would imagine he's the main character in the film, and he's in with some other dude and a higher up, and they want him to join his, I guess, supposed supposed army, I suppose, and uh, he. Takes the business card and on the back is says GI Joe on it. Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, I don't know, but given what Transformers movies are and given what GI Joe movies are, you know, <laughs> outside of outside of their respective uh, uh, animated series, uh, not too much to hoop and holler about. Well, they have had several crossovers over the years. They had one back in 86. There's been multiple 
Um, yeah, well, there was there was the there was the episode of there was the episode uh, Transformers episode called uh, what was it called? Only human. yeah, it was yep. called Only Human, and there was there was uh, Cobra. Cobra was in was in that episode, and he turned uh, who was it? RC Springer. Rodimus Prime and Ultra Magnus into human beings. Yeah, and and there were the final line of, well, they don't make terrorists like they used to. Cobra! Something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he says, yeah. And I think one of, it was actually Flint's, like, great-granddaughter. Flint's last name is Fairborn, and there was a Fairborn, um, a female officer. Marissa Fairborn. Marissa Fairborn, yeah, yeah. Marissa Fairborn. Um, who is who is part who is a member of the uh uh oh, god damn it uh Autobot Air Force Artillery <laughs> rank something on uh, something or other in the cartoon yeah yeah okay. Marissa Fairborn yeah but the the comics are kind of cool I'm not reading the I'm not reading the Transformers one but the Joe one they overlap it even has uh Megatron is held hostage by Cobra La yeah they're going there um, wow. um, Starscream fucked up a, a military transport, um, and like, but and Duke was on the, Duke was on the plane. He had he ejects, but nobody else believes him. So now he's on the run. So they're really tying in. They're calling the Energon universe. They're tying right. in some stuff, and it's selling. The books are selling. Um, nice pull, MZ. I was gonna say one passing we missed. Um, from the great fans of uh, SCTV, um, recently passed uh, Joe Flaherty, um, oh. passed away. Yep, and that was a bummer. Oh, Flaherty was brilliant, fucking brilliant. Oh, did I love that guy? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh was he yeah. Funny. And the most people probably know him from his, um, like film work, right? Like happy um, Gilmore. Okay. Yeah, Happy Gilmore. He was the jeer- jeering fan. Um, oh my God, he was. Yeah, I forgot about this. I'm looking at his filmography. He was in Back to the Future Part Two, Western Union yep. man. Yep. Yeah, he was the Western Union guy. Yeah. No, Marty McFly. <laughs> his right name, Marty McFly. Ah oh, shit! What was? Oh yeah, it was uh the it, it was uh Happy Gilmore. Um. I loved his fucking heckling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jackass. Yeah. Jackass. Yeah. Jackass. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he that's, that's a big loss, yeah. Stripes, he was awesome yeah. with stripes. Oh. But but SCTV, his T V work was just fantastic. Yeah. I was he was he, he Count Floyd? Count Floyd. He was in that infamous episode of Married with Children. Uh, with Tracy Lords, where he plays the dentist and now goes to the dentist for the first time. <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah, and Tracy Lords, fresh off her porn career, comes in and plays like his nurse. Oh, he, I, he, I didn't know this. He was in Police Academy the series as Commandant Stuart Hef, Heffelfinger. Oh, that, that's right, he was. Yeah, ah, I guess so. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, you don't you don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Unless you unless you're just interested in watching Michael Winslow collect the paycheck. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. I I didn't watch Police Academy the series and I didn't watch Weird Science the series. I just I had to say the nay no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's oh man, he's been so much shit. I mean, I just you know, I recognize him from like he was in like Who's Harry Crumb, yeah. Uh, Inner yeah. Space, One Crazy yeah. Summer. Uh, he was in an episode of The Hitchhiker. Johnny yeah, he worked with John Candy a lot. Apparently. Johnny Johnny Dangerously. He was a death row inmate, uncredited. Oh really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he really? Yeah. I to look at that. He was he was in Heavy Metal. He did um, the lawyer in in the segment Captain Stern. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. And yep. G- I haven't seen heavy metal in years. And general, Stern. and as the general in the segment, so beautiful and so dangerous. 
Huh. And of course, I think you, you guys said stripes already, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, where he plays the the Russian soldier. Oh, he was in used car. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, used yeah. cars. He was in used cars. 1980, yeah. Great, yeah. Uh, yep. That was uh, with the great Kurt Russell. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's... Oh, he, was, he was a piss of that guy. That movie was the first movie I saw uh, nudity in. Huh? Nice. All right. So I got the movie, but yeah, um, it's a shame. Uh, Joe Flaherty was a really funny guy, great character actor and uh, comedian or comedy actor, I should say. I don't yeah. know if he actually did stand up, but. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm looking here. There's a, a picture of him with Joe Bob and Rhonda Shear from Monster Vision. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah. He, he as was like. As Count Floyd. Count, yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. He was probably in inner space too, I bet. Yeah, I said that. He was, yeah. Was, it, was he okay? Yeah, yeah. He was a hot shit. He was funny. I enjoyed him. <laughs> oh, hey, What's that movie, Wolfie? Okay, yeah, so next week, the movie we're going to do, this one sounds pretty interesting, supposedly going cold on this one, it's better if you do, uh, we're going to be doing a film called All You Need Is Death. <laughs> All right. All and... you need is death. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, it is on VOD. Um, it landed there today, actually. It's a horror film from writer-director Paul Dwayne. And I think this is his first horror film, so I don't, I don't we wouldn't know him from anything. But um, it is, uh, all I'll say is it is a an Irish uh, folk horror, I think. Oh. Okay. So we will we'll do... Go from Estonia to Ireland. Yes. <laughs> yes. We'll take the, take the flight. Uh, Indiana Jones map style from uh, Estonia <laughs> to Ireland. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll do All You Need Is Death. And I believe it hit VOD today. Yeah, it did hit VOD. So it's available to rent uh, if you're so inclined. So if you guys want to check it out, go ahead and then uh, come back next week. Let us know what you think. And uh, you can send a voice message to podcast at trickortreatradio.com with your thoughts. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything else to add about this movie. It's 91 minutes and it's in English, Raven Shadow. So. <laughs> yes, but is it, is it in Irish English or American English? Faith in Magora. Yeah. Because you're going to hear everybody sounding like Conor McGregor now. <laughs> Robert Higgins uh, said in the chat, that's the one where they turned Bumblebee into Beetlejuice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he said, Druids on parade. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a lesson known Rage Against the Machine song. Yes, yes. Druids on parade. <laughs> All right. So I think we're going to wrap up before 11. Look at this MC. Ten thirty eight. Hey, oh, goddamn time. <laughs> see, I, I can God see damn. how it, I can see how it import how important it is to get out on time when you guys want to get out on time. Well, <laughs> I, I I see how it is. <laughs> well, medical you know, problems. Medical problems. Work problems. Yeah. How, how is it? Did, did you get uh, four feet of snow today, MZ? <laughs> no, the the snow that we got last week, which was a week ago today. I got maybe six inches, and it and by Sunday it was gone. Yeah, that's good. Just wait it out. Just wait it out. <laughs> Play the long game. Uh, Robert Higgins says, "Be strong, be brave, Raven Shadow." Trying, bro. <laughs> Thanks, pal. All right. Well, yeah, I think that's gonna do it. So we're just uh, just over two hours here. We did we did go pretty late last week. Um, to be fair. To be fair. So if you guys feel like you're ripped off, go back and listen to last week. We almost went four hours. So <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, last week was, let's see, I have it right here, three hours, 44 minutes. And then the week before that it was three hours, 49 minutes. So 
almost yeah, yeah. four hours, two weeks in a row. Yeah, we'll back off a little bit and do just over two hours tonight. So, <laughs> all right, well, that'll do it. So, MZ, why don't you say goodbye to the folks? Uh, over there, you douchebags. And Raven Shadow, go get yourself some sex. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Like, what, you just wow. go to the store and, you just know. Put, just wear goggles when you do. Okay. <laughs> Can you supersize that and uh, also give me some sex on the side? Is that, yes, is that how that works? Never said anything else. Well, uh, funny you ask. Um, by chance, um, do you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Robert Higgins wants to know: Have we progressed on the jazam treatment? We have. We have been thinking about it. There's been, been some, dis- about it. There's been some discussions, I've been but thought. yeah, I've been giving thought to a to a theme song and everything. Oh, God. I've been playing with lyrics in my head. <sighs> I really have. I really have. Uh, God. I don't even know if I That's want to hear lyrics. <laughs> I'm not interested in saying them right now. So let's just keep going. <laughs> All right. Raven Chat, why don't you say goodbye? All right. Live fast, love hard, die with your mask on. All right. That is going to do it for the show. So we appreciate you guys tuning in. And um, if, uh, yeah, you guys, if you guys check out the film that we did, The Invisible Fight. Go ahead and uh, let us know what you think. Podcast at trickertureader.com. And next week, we will be doing the film All You Need Is Death. And it is on VOD right now. You guys can check that out. And uh, come back let us know what you think if you do check it out. And, um, yeah, Raven Chow, uh, good luck healing. And uh, also, uh, good job staying off the sauce and the smokes. Yeah, thank you. And maybe you should uh, see how long you can go. We'll try. We're going to see. It's a, it's a game of inches. <laughs> that's what she said. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is that, are you talking about smoking or sex again? <laughs> Let's go to commercial. Oh, shit. All right. Well, that's going to do it. So we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>